Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel, friends. It's time for some Star Trek Prodigy, specifically Season 1, Episode 9, A Moral Star, Part 1. This is our second two-parter, friends. We had one back at Episodes 1 and 2, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what kind of hellacious cliffhanger they give us at the end of this one, because that seems to be the uh, cliff deadly cliffhanger seems to be my life right now with The Expanse and some other shows I'm watching. But for, uh, Fringe, too. Um, but, friends, uh, if you could do me a favor before we get started hit that like button smash that subscribe ring that bell for notifications you'll be alerted next time we go live with prodigy or any of our sci-fi fare and of course it greatly helps out the channel and if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full-length format the link to the patreon is in the description but friends all that's then and this is now and now it's time for our second two-parter as we watch star trek prodigy season one episode nine a moral star part one Prepare to engage maximum warp reaction, and away we go. Yeah, this show's really picked up. I mean, uh, again, it makes it sound like I didn't like it before. I found it enjoyable before. Um, this is becoming, a, in my mind, a very good show. The story has picked up to the point where it's not entertaining to watch alone. It's almost mandatory where you just you, you get to that point where you need to see where things are going to go. You need to see what happens to a specific character. You know, that's when for me, that's when I know that I'm in a show when not watching the show. I think to myself, what's going to happen to so and so? You know, how are they getting out? How's the crew getting out of this one if it's a cliffhanger? That's good stuff. And that happens just about every time I am introduced to a new Star Trek property. So this is about around the time when I was lassoed into the uh, Cerritos crew. Loved them. Loved them. And about five episodes into season one, I was like, I cannot stop watching this show now. I think that's the best way to put it. Stopping the show at, that, at this point is an impossibility, you know? Wow, an absolute shit ton of writers on this one. That's a good or bad sign. Beautiful. So I got Janeway back online. She helped me plug in the warp matrix. A crazy <laughs> whoosh went into the engine. And then all of you came back. Wow. Good work, kid. <laughs> really good work. I still can't believe this guy got onto our ship. No matter how far we run, the Diviner always finds us. Why are we... Why don't we put him off the ship? Listen, it's a recording. To the thieves who have stolen my protostar. Oh, wow. If you do not comply within one day cycle, the miners will pay the price. Oh, my progeny, I never wanted it to come to this, but there are needs greater than either of ours. To the thieves who have stolen my protostar. Nice. Oh, it's so cool. You gotta go back and get them. He's gonna kill him. The others are in trouble because we got away. We need to go back. We can't give my father the ship. You don't give him the ship. The what are you suggesting? A rescue mission? Yes. We should contact the Federation. Let them handle it. If you're in the Delta Quadrant, they're not gonna get... It'll be too late. Yep. Either we jump to the Federation, unsure if they can make it in time, or jump to Tars Lamora and surrender our ship for the lives of our brethren. I don't envy your position. Neither option is a guarantee. Ultimately, the choice is the captain's alone. Going back for the miners is a bad call. Oh. That Jankum couldn't be prouder to make with you, Dom Doms. Who's in? I'm in. Hoot, hoot. What do you say? That's the that's the best Tellerite speech pep talk ever. It's an awful idea, and I'm in. <laughs> He got, he, he was able to be a contrarian and agree. <laughs> Everything we fought for, the ship, our freedom, our friends, we could lose all of it. Don't look at me like that. I meant all of us, the, the crew. Doesn't matter. It's still sentiment, buddy. Hostile territory. Outnumbered a yes. hundred to one. Yes. To make a trade with someone we can't even trust. Yes. We still need to escape with all the miners without a ship. When you put it that way... Figure it out. This is our Kobayashi Maru. So... What are you saying? 
It can't be one of my half-baked plans. It's gotta be a good one. Not with all of our lives on the line. Don't forget, you're not alone. We're in cat boots now. Let's plan together. Let's fucking do this. Let's go. <gasps> oh, I didn't realize that was tensile. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Get them phasers ready. Let's replicate a few ships. Coffee? <laughs> oh, ha, ha. <laughs> what do you got, Murph? <laughs> I'm so down with this. My indestructible friend, this may just work. <laughs> My indestructible friend. Down. I'm here for you now, buddy. I see the arc. I take it all back. I got you, buddy. I'm with you. I'm. Let's ride, buddy. I am. I am in your camp. Let's ride. Let's ride. Hell yeah, buddy. Hell yeah, brother. Let's do this. Look at them. Oh, look at Rock. Whoa! Look at us. Looking good. Look at you all. Does the zero get something? Whoa. Yeah, there we go. Shuttle. Was it a paint job? Oh, I love it. That's better. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I know you never thought you were Starfleet material, but today you're risking everything on a seemingly impossible mission to save others. There's nothing more Starfleet than that. Nothing's more Starfleet than that. Fuck yes! I nailed that shit! Prepare proto drive. Let's go. Brother and drives away online. Hey, we go. We are set to jump. On my mark. Ready. Go fast. Go get them, kids. Man, I am in this shit now. Oh, uh, it's like it forms the delta. Uh. Oh, so good. Let's go. I looked at her. And you doubted she would come. He activated cloak. Is the whole base cloaked? <laughs> Rock, lower all shields. Lowering shields, Captain. Lowering shields, Captain. Let's do this. Jankum, prepare cargo transporter. Ah, uh, cargo transpo is a go go. <laughs> Come on, Murph. It's time to play dress up. It's time to play dress up for Murph, our indestructible friend. Penny, for your thoughts? I worry that if I'm captured, your father will use me as a weapon again. It's not happening, Zero. And we're not leaving anybody behind. You're telling us in. Everyone, you know what to do. I never wanted to see this place again. Too many bad memories. Then let's make some better ones, kid. You ready to face your pops? <laughs> no turning back now. Let's do this shit. They gotta turn the tractor beam off at some point. Listen. We gotta get the kitty on board. End of discussion. Nah, the whole crew. Father. Progeny. Oh, look at that shot. Do you have any idea what that uniform represents? A commitment to strive for a better future. Oh. Uh -huh. My progeny comes with me. <gasps> Gwyn wasn't part of the deal. No deal. It doesn't matter. You're not going. Dal, stop. This is my choice. She needs to hear. She needs to hear and make her choice. I'll go with you. If you free the miners and promise my crew the Rev-12. There is no way we're leaving you with that monster. When he took all of you, I stood by and did nothing. I need to make it right. Is this part of the plan? Except if we give up the Rev-12. I have my protostar and my progeny. I need nothing else. The Rev-12 is big enough to get these people off. This is part of the plan. Are you sure?
Nice. Because Murph is still, this is, this is part of the plan. Remove that vile thing. No, 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 no. I keep that shit. It's going to crush it. And get to the other, to the Rev 12. That can, I guarantee you that can take everybody. That some bitch is huge. Plus. It's been too long. It's been too long. Wait, is everything okay? I did what I had to. That chair doesn't belong to you. Override this star from nuisance. Oh. oh no. Welcome oh, no. aboard, Captain. Oh no. Oh, oh, no. no. It's part of the plan. I, I, I. Great, great symbology there. Target the Rev 12's power generators. Leave them nothing. No! No. Without power, they'll lose the atmospheric shields. They'll never survive. I promised them a ship. What? Oh, you fucking. <laughs> Oh my god. The miner double double brocha. Oh, nice catch, Rock. <laughs> there go the shields. Oh no. There goes gravity. Help! I'm scared now. I've got you, Rock. Janko, get a hoof on zero. Jacob's got zero. Who's got Jacob? Come on, just hold on, everybody. Nice job. Toy Story fucking three this shit. You are a monster. You will understand my actions in time. No, she won't. We're clear of the asteroid system. Okay. You said you'd tell me the truth. Why is this ship so important to you? It's gonna get you home. You're my daughter. I cannot do this without you. Do what? I'm ready to listen. You. You're hiding something. Yes, yeah, she is. The puzzle core is not responding. The computer is saying it is not on the ship. What? Lose something? I took the protocol. Fucking A right they did. <laughs> <laughs> Wynn was right. She bought us a ship. The Diviner couldn't resist the bait. But did he have to take out the power? A hitch to our plan, but... Is that zero or not? Without gravity, it'll just be a little harder. How's Mer doing? I knew it! Got a core intact. Good thing he's indestructible. Otherwise, our faces would be melting off. What a... Emergency evacuation thruster pack. Way to go, guys. Get our power back on so we can get the Rev-12 in the air. Zero and I will corral the miners and get back to the ship. Get everybody on the ship. Hell of a plan, Captain. I have enough time for this crazy plan to work. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice cliffhanger. Oh, really great. Oh, boy, they are cooking with gas now, my friends. Uh, cooking with gas now. Friends, we just got done watching Star Trek Prodigy Season 1, Episode 9, A Moral Star, Part 1. And the only thing left to do is to talk about it. All right, everybody, we just got done watching Star Trek Prodigy Season 1, Episode 9, A Moral Star, Part 1. Boy, oh, boy. I mean, I said it at the end. They are cooking. They are hitting on all cylinders now. This was great. Great kind of, you know, uh, misdirect, you know, I, again, it wasn't too much of a misdirect because you, you think that they, there's no way they would have, ex they had to have expected that he was going to do this, that the diviner was going to double cross them somehow. So I love the idea that they had already had their own double cross set with that incredibly interesting way of getting the proto star off by having Murph swallow it. That's great shit. That is really cool. That is really interesting. It's using all of your crew members. Murph and Murph is a crew member using all of your crew members abilities to their, their, their you know, just 
every asset that you have in play, you're going to deploy for this particular ruse to work. And I love it. Really great stuff. Um, some stellar acting between Ella Purnell and John Noble when they were uh, talking as progeny and diviner. Uh, my progeny. Um, really, really cool stuff. Uh, I guess the theory now is that the protostar, specifically the ability to jump as far as they needed, I'm wondering now if the diviner and, you know, Gwen by uh, proxy are truly the last of their species. Maybe there is a way to like kickstart the species, get to a home world that maybe is too far removed. You know, that the only way to get there would be to use the, the protostar's ability to jump vast distances. I'm thinking that might have something to do with it. You know, that, that what other reason would you need the protostar for? The protostar's like soup. I mean, another starship would do it, but the protostar's one kind of unique feature is this ability to jump massive distances in one proto leap or whatever they want to call it. So it, it's got to be something. He says, you know, I was I was blinded by duty, and that must have been like you know maybe he was given an order, find a way to get to a place or blah, blah, blah. You know, you're the last, do it. And which it, it makes, you know, no pun intended since John Noble's the actor, but it makes the diviner's actions, if that's the case, Noble, if he's the last chance of his species and he's sort of kind of painted into a corner with, you know, the choices that he's able to make here, he has to be able to, you know, you know I mean, he just, he doesn't really have the luxury of being moral, <laughs> you know, he has to just do what needs to be done to get his species, race, civilization, however you want to say it back online. And so I love the idea that he's doing just that, you know, and again, the best villains are the ones that if you look at their perspective, you understand what they're doing. They believe themselves to be right. And the truly great villains are the ones that if you spin around and step into their boots and look out through their eyes, you agree. You go, no, I'm not sure I could have done anything differently. If that's my job, task, quest, whatever it happens to be, and I only have the same options in front of me as the diviner, well... I mean, I, it, it, this is a terrible set of circumstances, but this is what you have to do. I am starting to think, too, that ultimately what we're looking at here with the Diviner and Dreadnought is at some point the Diviner is going to have a redemption arc. At some point, the Diviner is going to say, you know, you know he's going to choose Gwen at some point, and Dreadnought is going to see this. And the thing that kind of... Uh, twisted my eye understanding of the dynamic between the Diviner and the and Dreadnought was that flashback we had a couple episodes ago. The one where the Diviner seemed to be especially weak or, or affected by whatever disease is, uh, you know, assaulting him. And he said, I need to make a progeny help me do that. And it was almost, he couldn't order Dreadnought to do that. Dreadnought had to agree to do it, which immediately reset the dynamic between those two. Initially, I thought it was definitely, you know, a, a superior ordering dreadnought around that flashback made me you know revisit that uh definition for that dynamic because it seemed to be at the very least a partnership um to the point where dreadnought has spoken up and said no, i don't think this is the right thing to do you know and it's not like he's been reprimanded so to speak by the diviner um it's way more equal their relationship as far as power you know uh, power perceived and power factual it's very very even uh much much more even than i would have believed it to be at the top of the series so i'm thinking that at some point we have like a, a true heel turn by dreadnought where dreadnought takes over and kind of you know uh kills the diviner or something of that nature I always, I'm getting like strong Brainiac vibes off of uh, Dreadnought. Uh, Brainiac being the AI, you know, artificial intelligence uh, or uh, cybernetic construct from like the last sentient being from Krypt uh, Krypton, you know, Superman's Krypton. Brainiac came from there too um, and had its own way of trying to figure out like how to bring Krypton back. That's always kind of Brainiac's thing is that, you know, how to like kind of like rebuild Krypton. Um, but I get a, I get a feeling that Dreadnought might be a part of that too, whether he was created at the time, you know, did the diviner create him? Is he something that can be created? I'm looking at him like a robot, like a droid, but I'm not sure that he is. I'm really curious about that character now. And like I said, the dynamic has shifted considerably for me. So if Dreadnought is under the same mission as the diviner, like the diviner was the last of his species, 
but he was provided Dreadnought to help with like the, the, the reignition of the species. And Dreadnought has the same mission parameters, like you need to do this too, help the Diviner. And uh, the Diviner, you need to do this, Dreadnought will help you, and you help Dreadnought. If Dreadnought thinks that, that the Diviner is moving away from that mission goal, he might decide to take over for himself and say, no, 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 I'm gonna see this thing through. Interesting uh, stuff, friends. What this show picked up, uh, like a like a proto star, proto warp drive. I mean, we were flying nice. We were flying at about warp six, and then we just were off the charts. Now, great, great stuff, friends. All right, everybody. If you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It greatly helps out the channel, and it alerts you next time we go live with Star Trek Prodigy or any of our sci-fi fare. And of course, if there's anything that we do, including Star Trek Prodigy, that you would like early or in its full-length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. But friends, all that is then, and this is now, and now it's time to say goodbye. So where do we say goodbye from? Well, this is a cliffhanger. This is a, a, a one between a one and two parter. So we don't say goodbye here. We just pause. And in our pause, we are able to see what we want to see in this moment. And that, my friends, is the formation of one hell of a Starfleet crew. Can't wait to see where this goes, friends. This series is on and popping. Until next time, friends, Vulcan Rome. And I will see you.